hope that nobody ever experiences the pain that I have just experienced. I've just recorded the video that you're about to see. I've already done a version of this and I spent about an hour recording the footage only to go and start editing it to realize that my mic was muted the entire time. Anyways, on with the video. As we all know, getting important information about our servers to our players is more important than ever. With the various different plugins and the different events that people are running and all of the various different things that are going on on your server, you want that information readily available to your players at any given time. Now we all know that there's plugins out there that do something very similar. Server info, I've done a couple of videos on it. In fact, I'll even post a link to one right now. But the plugin that I'm going to talk about in today's video just does all of that just so much better. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy. On this channel, I do plugin reviews and tutorials, plus I also teach you everything that you need to know about owning and operating a successful Rust server. So if you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on. If you're looking for ways to make your server just a little bit better than everybody else's, this is the channel where you're gonna learn all about it. All right, so the plugin that we're talking about today is Welcome GUI. It's available from imperialplugins.com and the developer's name is Dana. Now there's a couple of things that we're gonna go over in the documentation on Imperial Plugins website, but we're not going to spend a whole lot of time here. First things first, there's two known issues with this plugin. When we're talking about the kits section of Welcome GUI, you're going to see this in a couple of minutes. There's a known issue with the cooldown as well as the redemption limit of the kits that are available. You'll understand what I mean when you see that in a minute. The second thing worth noting is the fact that while this plugin will have the ability to actually make shop purchases, if your server has a shop already installed in it, that functionality is currently not available. If you want your players to be able to select the kit from your welcome GUI, then obviously you'll need the optional dependency kits, but I'm assuming that if you're heading that direction, you already have it anyway, so you're probably good there. And then the last thing that I'm going to go over on the documentation side of things is the permission. Yes, there is a permission associated with this plugin. However, there's nothing actually behind the permission, so you don't need to deal with it just yet. I'm sure throughout the development of this plugin, obviously Danny is going to be utilizing the permission. That's why he put it in there. But as it stands right now, not required. Don't worry about it. All right, so I kind of need to do this backwards because when a player first joins the server, this is automatically going to happen for them anyways. But if you're already in the server and you want to recall this information, you simply do slash info in chat. Just like that. That's going to bring up the welcome GUI. Now, when I ran that command, you can see that the menu fades in and it looks all smooth and good. You know what I mean? And that's what I like about this plugin so much is it's very minimalist, but it's very slick. It's it's very dialed in. So this config that we're working on right now is default. This looks exactly like it's going to look if you install this onto your server. So he gives you some sample questions with some BS answers there that don't actually line up with what the question actually is. That's fine. We're going to deal with that. And he's also got some random servers in here that are displayed. Now the kits option is actually going to grab information from my kits plugin and it's going to display the kits that already exist on my server. So if we click on kits, obviously it's going to show the kits that I've previously made on other videos. It's going to display all that information for us and the events and the leaderboard and all that stuff that doesn't matter. We're going to get into that in just a little bit. What I'm going to do right now is load the configuration that I've actually built while I was testing this plugin out. And we're going to start working with that instead. This is what it's going to look like for you the very first time you install it. But this is what it looks like after I was done playing around with it. So I've gone through and I've actually answered some of these questions correctly so that the answers are right. This is in my FAQ section. I've also changed my servers to display some actual servers that I actually care about. And the kits looks exactly the same. Now you're going to notice that I have my shop enabled in here. And I'm going to explain why in just a minute, because as I said before, the shop functionality of this plugin does nothing. Actually, no, I'm going to tell you why I enabled the shop right now. You see this little white bar right here that sits next to whichever menu I'm actually selected on. If we take that shop section out, you're going to see my probably my one and only complaint about this plugin. All right. So now with my shop taken out, you're going to see that white bar reacts a little bit differently. So we go down to kits and it looks okay. I think it happens at events. So if I click on events, you can see that white bar actually goes down to leaderboard because it's acting like the shop is still there, even though it's not displayed. We go down to leaderboard. It goes down even further, of course, because if the shop were enabled, it would be right here where events is and where leaderboard is now would be down one. So it's just a really finicky. It's an OCD detail that I found. It jumped right right off the page at me and I had to figure out why it was doing that. And I figured out that it was because the shop was disabled. So with shop enabled, you can see that that white bar sits exactly where it's supposed to on each one. And I'd rather have the shop functionality do nothing. This blank screen that you see right here and have that white bar where it's supposed to be. I know it's so stupid. It's such a small detail. Why would anybody care about this? 
Welcome to my world. All right, so what is some of the functionality of this? Well, as you can see, I've put a banner across the top of this plugin, now advertising literally whatever I want it to advertise. On my FAQ section, it's displaying the address to my Discord server. On my server section, it's promoting my YouTube channel. On my kits section, it's not promoting anything. It just says kits available. If I go to my events calendar, it says upcoming events. As you can see what I'm talking about, like you can literally put in whatever banner you want in there. You are gonna need to have some graphic skills the dimensions of that banner, by the way, if you are going to be creating graphics for it, is 1350 by 80. Now, the events calendar can be a very powerful tool. The plugin has the ability, by default, it's set to automatically generate for swipe days, following the same calendar that Facepunch uses. So if your server is on Facepunch's wipe schedule, you won't have to do anything extra here. The plugin is automatically going to generate the first Thursday of the month, and then it's going to look like this. When somebody clicks on that day, it's going to say this is forced wipe day. If we go down to February 3rd, same thing, forced wipe day. Now this plugin has the ability for you to add whatever events you want. So if you have an event coming up on your server that you wanna to promote to everybody that comes in, then you can simply add an event inside the configuration file. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a minute, but this is what it looks like. So on Friday, December 31st is video day, January 7th video day, January 14th is video day, so on and so forth. You get the idea. Now the plugin also has its own built-in leaderboard. Now because I'm the only player that has access to this server, it's only gonna show one player on here, that's me. In a pop populated server, it's automatically going to generate all of the information for the players that are currently on your server. So everyone can quickly and easily hop on the leaderboard and see where they stand, which by the way, having a leaderboard definitely creates some competition amongst your players. It's definitely worth having. All right, let's go over the config file. It's super simple. The workflow is very easy to understand. I'm pretty confident that there's going to be very few people that struggle with this in any way. So the very top section of the configuration file are the global parameters that are going to control the entire plugin. So in this section, here we can control fade in fade out we can control the transparency of the images the blur of the background behind the images one thing that i know that people are probably going to ask at this point is can we add images behind the welcome gui and the answer to that is currently no but that could just be because it's not even on dana's radar or maybe it is and it's something that he decided to not implement i have no idea i haven't discussed the production of this video with dana so i don't have any input from the developer as of right now down below the global parameters is where we can start getting into the left hand side menu options so the first one is obviously the faq or frequently asked questions we can decide do we want this section enabled by default this is set to true what do we want it to display at the very top here where it says frequently asked questions that's the page title right here and then what image do we want to use as a banner obviously i've just uploaded some really quickly developed images to imager and just grabbed those addresses and threw them in there thankfully dana has put a reminder in there for the image dimensions which is important and then of course we get into the questions and answers and it's set up so well that I don't even need to go into the details because I know that once you see this configuration file you're going to know exactly what to do the one thing that I will explain from default you get five questions and five answers but that doesn't mean that that's all you can have you can add more you can reduce you can do pretty much whatever you want but if you're going to be adding questions and answers this is the section that you want to copy pasta right here so you want to go before this comma and you want to go after this curly brace right here so we can just copy that to the clipboard and as you can see I've already done that I'll do another one down below that I'll just pause that in there we want to change the number to seven in my case but you want to be sequential with whichever number was before it you want to add one to that and then we're going to trigger that by, by turning that to true and I'm just going to quickly save that reload the plugin and then I'm going to show you that what I just did actually did take effect so I've added this sixth question down here how do I add another question just like this going into the server page section this is really very simple as you can see the formatting of the server section is exactly the same as the FAQ section so is this section enabled true or false side menu title servers the advert banner that we want to use and then we get into the servers that are listed in that section so by default i think there's a rustified one whatever but I've just added the ones that I do actually care about. And the nice part about this is you don't have to have any kind of API keys for those servers. You just need the server IP and the port that it's running on. That's all the information that you need to display that server on your welcome GUI. Kits, again, follows the exact same formatting. Is it enabled, true or false? The title on the left-hand side, kits, and then the header image that we want to display above the kits. The shop page, zero functionality right now even adding a banner doesn't do anything to it but if you want that white bar to be where it's supposed to be you got to make sure that this is actually enabled set to true such a silly thing i know the events page 
follows the exact same formatting of course because why wouldn't it enabled true or false the title the banner now this is the section where you can automatically generate the forced wipe days if your server doesn't follow face punch's wipe schedule you would want to set this to false and it'll get rid of the predetermined wipe days which is the first thursday of every month you would then of course go in and start creating your own events displaying when your wipe days actually are so these are just some of the events that i showed you a minute ago so my video launch days are set on every friday and the formatting is super simple so year month day and then the exact time of day that you want that event to be advertised as so let's just go in and pick one right here let's change this one to let's just change that to gun game day for just for for example so we're going to save we're going to reload we're going to go back to our server we're going to do slash info and bring up our events calendar and i forget what day it was oh so january 7th i changed that to gun game day it still follows the same specifications because i didn't change any of the colors but as you can see i just updated that event just like that it was just that easy let's say i wanted to change the day of that event from the 7th to the 18th we can just simply do that save reload go back to the server and type slash info again go back to our events calendar and as you can see there it's now switched it to january 18th i'm just showing you this because i just want you to understand how simple it is to change the events calendar for your server or of course if you decide that you don't want to have this events calendar on your server you can just toggle that option to false and then you don't have to worry about your events calendar at all i think this is a nice touch and i think there's a lot of server owners out there that are going to like the ability of advertising their different events and like that can be anything that can be in-game events it can be real life events it could be discord events like contests or giveaways or whatever whatever it is that you've got going on to build your community advertise it on your events calendar so because this is round two of me recording this video i can already tell that things are going much faster when i was finished my first version of this video and realized that my mic was muted the entire time i was at 59 minutes we're now currently at 28 minutes so my raw footage is definitely less so we only have a couple more things that i want to explain about the leaderboard it's important information so hopefully i still have most of you so your leaderboard is going to be automatically generated by the plugin and this is probably what it's going to look like by default so you're going to see your player's name as well as your player's steam 64 id there are people out there that don't want to have their steam 64 64 IDs displayed in public view like that. I don't really know why they care because that information is readily available anyways. So if you want to make that information hidden, of course, you go into the configuration file under the leaderboards page and we go to hide steam IDs and we want to change this to true. By default, this is set to false. And while we're here, I also might explain that you might not want to have your admins or moderators displayed on your leaderboard. So then of course we can do hide admins, true or false. I forget where this is set by default, but I definitely want to to display myself on there so that I could actually show you guys something because nobody else can join this server. So I'm not sure if this is set to false by default or not. So just ask yourself the question, do you want your admins or moderators to be displayed on your leaderboard? Probably not. That's how you make it so that they're not. You would change this to true, save, reload the plugin, and it'll make it so that none of your admins or moderators are displayed on your leaderboard. So another thing that is relatively important as far as the leaderboard goes is where is that information stored? So if we go into Oxide, we go into our data folder and we go into the full Folder called welcome GUI right there you're gonna see the leaderboard.json right here this is where the information is stored for each one of your individual players that are going to be displayed on your leaderboard why am I showing you this because if you want to reset your leaderboard after every wipe you would want to delete this file at the time of your server wipe so that the leaderboard can get reset of course you can go in and edit any one of these statistics that you want obviously I haven't killed 187 players on a server that I'm the only one that's allowed to be on but be careful with this because you do want your leaderboard or your players want your leaderboard to be accurate so i would suggest not doing what i did on this server so the important thing to know is if you want to wipe your leaderboard clean you want to delete this file when you're wiping your server that's it that's the only reason why i wanted to show you this file and that basically sums up welcome gui so you guys need to let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of this plugin so far do you think this is something you might want to add to your server and do you think the danish should add the ability so that we can put graphics in behind so instead of just having this grayed out section right here with a blur which definitely looks good and it definitely looks classy but what if we could add an image back there let me know what you guys think all right i put out a brand new video every friday at 5 p.m mountain standard time without fail so until next friday if you can't be smart at least be careful